Right, boys and girls, in this uh, series of videos, we're going to be looking at the exam paper from May 2017. Um, if you don't have a copy of this uh, handed to you by your teacher, you can always download it from the website itself. As with my previous uh, series, I have a link here, so I can just maximize this a little bit, there we go. Uh, and if you just type this in your search bar, um, as it is, Obviously, make sure you've got capital letters here for the D, R, T, and D. It should take you to that website. Now, you can copy all the assets and the exam paper from here as well. Now, if you don't have access to it, so I'm just going to actually go onto this website so I can show you what this looks like. So I'm going to go here, open a tab. There we go. And what you should see is this, very similar to the last um, series. And you'll see all the exam papers here. So we're looking at this one here, May 2017. And you'll notice that some of these are locked, so you may need your teacher to unlock it for you and um, give you access to the assets and the exam paper from here. Uh, but as you go down, obviously, for revision purposes, you may want to look at these other ones at the bottom, which are unlocked and available for you to look at. It's always a good idea to um, get as much experience as you can, um, because with practical um, applications, um, and practical subjects such as this one, it really is uh, practice that makes perfect. <clears throat> right, moving on. The first thing I want to show you, uh, I'm doing something slightly different with my classes um, at uh, school. I've created this acronym, and yes, it's a little random, and that's the point. Um, but it's the, the more random it is, the easier it is to remember. So I want you to remember when you go to uh, any exam, what baby Pat Salima? And I know the spelling isn't correct yet, the O here and the I here, but it's there for you to remember. Um, and if you remember those letters, you'll get the planning of your uh, website for the exam uh, down a lot easier as well. And you'll have the order of what needs to be attempted uh, done as well. So what do they actually stand for? Well, this is what it is, and as I said, my year, uh, my class is obviously making uh, make, making use of this, uh, and it's a lot easier. And um, in fact, I've changed it slightly. You'll see there's an E here and an I here. Um, so, for example, the first W stands for the three Ws, meaning who, what, and why. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more in detail on the next slide. So you need to understand obviously the target audience. That's the who, the what, as in what it is that you need to do, what needs to be included. And why? What's the point? The O stands for organising your folders, which is one of the first things you do when you go into an exam and getting your assets table folder and, uh, and anything else that needs to be uh, organised as well. T stands for your template, which includes your table. Once you've done the template, you then go usually go for banner and your buttons for your template. Once you've made that, you can then use the template to make your pages and you add the text. So that's the P, A and T. And then the L-E-I-M is links and the edited images and media that needs to be added as well. So if you remember this acronym, What Baby Pats of Lima, and remember those letters, you should be able to, following this order, be able to plan and then organise and basically get a fairly decent website created for your exam. Now, before I go any further, it's important that we look at the exam paper. So this is the exam paper here. And the first thing we need to understand is obviously what it is that we're being asked to do. And as I said, we want the, the three W's uh, sets. Now, when you get your paper, you usually have one or two pages that are blank uh, that you can use to the side of to make notes. You could also ask for or request more paper if you need to. Um, unfortunately, you can't take anything with you into the exam, but you can make notes while you're in the exam. Now, what I will say is this, boys and girls not to spend any more than, for, say, five, six or seven minutes maximum because you want to really utilise the time in the exam to actually create your, your website and, of course, testing it as you go along and then, obviously, the last 20 minutes or so to do the evaluation. So really focus on the production of the, the creation of the website more than anything else, but it's still a very good idea to plan beforehand because otherwise you might miss things out. Now, what I've done to save some time, to, uh, just got my I just want to show you my thinking, really. But you should be able to, and obviously I'm showing you this purely because um, this is what you you are going to see in the exam. If you don't have this in front of you 
often enough, you're not going to get used to the way the wording is in the exam paper, the kind of language that the examiner uses and how the, it's structured. Now remember, everything that is asked uh, of you from this paper isn't necessarily shown in chronological order. You have to go through it. Sometimes you'll go back and forwards. So let's have a quick read through. Who Done It is a crime fiction festival. The festival run for three days in June 2017. It's going to feature a wide variety of events, including a writer's workshop aimed specifically for teenagers. Uh, Who Done It requires a website, so that's what you're making, to encourage both adults and teenagers to attend the festival. The basis of the content and information for the website can be found in the assets folder. So what's the overall swipe site requirement? Four pages, the names right there, home page, competition page, events page, and writer's workshop page. You've got the pixels for the width, and it's telling you that you can scroll, uh, have this as a scrolling website, so that's acceptable this time around. The writer's workshop page should be appealing to uh, the teenagers, so that's your main target audience for that page. The rest of the bit of website should be appealing to adults. The facts about the company will be in the info file, as always. Images can be will be taken from the assets folder, which may be edited. Okay, So you will do that yourself, as you have understood from the previous series of videos. Accessibility features is something you should be doing as you go along, especially if you use the alt text feature and a consistent design, which if you do a template properly, should be a breeze. Now, I'm not going to go through these right now, purely because we'll do them as you go through the videos, but for you, in the exam, very, very important. If you have a pen, use a pen. If you have a highlighter, use a highlighter. Use a pen to make notes, to highlight, underline, underline things that you need to do if you think you're going to be forget, if you're forgetful in the practice that you do in your lessons or in your own time at home. And Use a highlighter or, or a pen to cross them off as you go along. There's nothing wrong with you starting a little bit from this task here, then go to the next page and do some over here, like the book cover task, and then go back again to finish something else off. At the end of the day, all that matters is whatever you hand in, your end product, your website, is what the examiner is going to mark. So it doesn't really matter how you get there, whether you make mistakes along the way, you forget things, you change things, or whatever it might be, it doesn't really matter. Now, as you may have noticed in my last video series, um, I make mistakes, and I could have deleted them or edited them or re-recorded them, but the reason why I've kept them in there is because I don't want you to be afraid of making mistakes in the exam. As long as you correct them before you hand them in, they are not asking for evidence as you walk through the exam itself. They're not asking for evidence of how you've done it. They just want to see the end result and an evaluation. There's two things they're going to look for, your website pages and your evaluation. So in the next um, clip, I'm going to look at using this information to basically plan my thinking around what I need to do for this exam.